something that we've been well it's something that's been in my attention um for some time now so since we started Isle of Play which was about four years ago obviously we work with a lot of children so it's got to the point now we're working with about 750 children to a thousand children term time and more than that during the holidays and 50 percent of that kind of population thereabouts are boys uh, which is fine and great and everything's fine and but we've noticed there seems to be an increasing trend so the great thing about the charity is that we we can react and be flexible to meet the needs of the children and 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 wherever that need is we can sort of find our way to, to do it and, and to help if we're in a position to do so so what has happened is that we've been approached by schools over the last 18 months to start delivering one-to-one -one work with children children who have special educational needs children from behavioral units and children just aren't quite fitting in in the you know the, the round hole at, 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 within school and every one of those children has been boys and that led to a question in my mind about why is this just boys and so i expanded my sort of my, my observations a little bit further and we have special educational needs units who come to us 100 percent of those children that come the educational units that we work with boys the behavioral unit children that come sometimes boys it's not to say there aren't girls within those units across the isle of man but they are specifically boys so why is that well there's evidence that shows that boys are four times more likely to be diagnosed with an autistic spectrum disorder um and and, and then the way we look at education and the way education is formed is typically formed for children you know victorian model sit down in a classroom situation and, and learn that model works better for girls than it does for boys and it's one of those situations now that feels controversial to talk about the differences between boys and girls but certainly i won't go into anything any further than, than the play remit but there is differences or there are differences between the way that girls play and the way that boys play not all the time there is you know there's always going to be exceptions but we don't even cater for that anymore we don't let boys enjoy the rough and tumble play that they they so desperately need and crave and that's having a massive impact on their social development and now we're at the point where even before lockdown but especially during lockdown where children have missed out on significant portions of, of their development and if those neural pathways haven't formed during that time they're never going to form and boys are being left behind in this and the education system and our society is being more and more tailored towards the more acceptable behavior that is more prevalent within girls than it is within boys so it's it's a, it's a, it's a really wide-ranging um, multivariable problem that we're facing and there's no simple answer to it and that was going to be my next question really i suppose if you're a parent listening to this perhaps you recognize something in, in what you've said chris how would a parent be best advised to, to deal with this issue? It's difficult. It's difficult. And I think that because the facilities aren't there and the attitudes aren't there to provide opportunity for those boys that are struggling. And you want to really, you want to get to, you want to adjust things before the boys are struggling. And the only way that that's going to happen is by, you know, changing the way that we deliver education the way that our our communities are set up you know the the, the decline of, of children's play is 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 key to this and this is kind of where you know I, i'm coming from um you know since the, the 1950s 60s the average roaming distance for for boys and girls for an eight-year-old would have been six miles in any direction on their own without a parent we're now at the point where eight-year-olds are very rarely leaving the threshold of their own home without having a parent with them and that's having an adverse impact on children as well so over the summer we ran a program called street play and we, we closed off a couple of streets it was just a pilot project to see how it would work and it was amazing we had 30 children came out on a street that that does have children playing out in it but within those children there were children that had never been outside and played on the street on, on both the streets that we ran this on and so it gave children an opportunity just to come outside to play to mix with other children to rough and tumble play to ra race bikes up and down and burn off all that excess energy to socialize and the th one big thing that is plays key for it's about developing social competence and become socially active and um, and capable people within the environment that those children are growing up in and so if you don't get that right well how on earth do you expect them to sit down and to learn and to do anything else it's interesting though we are dealing with the tiktok generation aren't we and you know the attention span i'm sure 
again, many parents would recognize this in their own children. They're, they're constantly looking at their phones and they're onto the next thing. And, and it goes back to, I think, what you were talking about in terms of the education model, which just doesn't suit that mindset anymore. No, no, not at all. And, and the evidence is, is clear that boys have a, a much more likely to develop an addiction to screens and to screen times. Um, and that, that, that pro, I don't want to keep harping back to, to COVID. We've got to move past that. But there are impacts from COVID that we've seen, like fewer children are coming out, that those addiction habits are formed to screens and they're not being broken. Um, I, it's hard because I, I previously sort of spoke reasonably fondly of of the likes of computers you know children enjoying them and such but it's you know i remember my friend once said to me it's like a bag of fish and chips you know if you it's good to have a bag of fish and chips it's nice you enjoy it but you shouldn't have it all the time and that's what we're seeing you know i mean it's, it's wonderful that the children that do come to us never really get their phones out they don't really engage on the on the social media because once they're out and they're playing they're playing um but I mean, I don't think there's a simple answer to getting rid of, of social media or anything like that. So, When you're talking about this Manx boy crisis, who is this typical boy? What age is he? Well, it's, it's far ranging, really, isn't it? It's, um, you know, it, it, it stems... When we talk about a boy crisis, the, we're not just talking about children here. I mean, this goes on to adulthood. And so the role of, of fathers um, has changed and there's probably more absentee fatherism now perhaps partly in place due to uh, courts ruling in, in divorce settlements that they're more like I think they, they typically go for the 50 50 custody but but often mothers tend to to get the children more often than uh, than the fathers and yet the evidence shows that a, a single father is likely to to raise um, more successfully than a single mother which I think is really interesting but again there's always a caveat to these evidence that's somebody who's done it voluntarily um, and that, that number isn't, isn't quite as high. Um, so, yeah, no, it, it starts from birth. It's really important that, that, that boys are given the opportunity to, to play, to, to play freely, to, to rough and tumble play. It's important that girls are given this as well. I don't want to seem like I'm just like saying that girls should not play. Of course they should, and they should be allowed to mix as often as possible as well. But the, 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 the impact is, is, is beyond just childhood. It extends to adulthood. We know that um, come the age of 18 that the that boys or, or young men at this point are going to university potentially but fewer men are going to university than ever before and f uh, fewer men are staying in education as well so they're going in there and they're dropping out much more likely than girls and then of course you can go a bit further down the line as well you look at suicide rates and you're three times more likely to commit suicide if you're male than you than, than female so so like i say this is a really really broad ranging problem and it's not just a problem for educationalists it's a problem for 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 employers it's we've if if we're talking about 50 percent averagely 50 percent of the population then they're you know we need men in our community we need them to help in the jobs that that they're needed to fill and it, without the right guidance without the right support early doors then then we're going to be struggling along the line i suppose